Hello and welcome to P's to your next uh, lesson on quadratic relationships. Our goal today, I can recognize the equation of quadratic relation and use a graphing calculator to find the equation that best fits the curve. So we're moving along with modeling quadratic relationships and I just want to point out to you what a quadratic relationship is and we're going to take a look at what a quadratic relationship looks like. Uh, any relation that can be written in this form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is a quadratic relationship. Now there's a lot of letters there, um, but most of the time you're going to see a quadratic relationship. It's not going to have a, b's and c's in it. It's going to have some numbers where the a, b's and c's are. Uh, in the above general form, the a, b, and c are stand-ins for any number, usually an integer, except that the a value cannot be zero. So the a, b, and c are going to stand in for any number, but a can't be zero, and we're going to talk about why a can't be zero in just a minute. The other ones can be zero though. A c can be zero and a b can be zero, it's just the a can't, or it's not a quadratic relationship. So here's an example. If I fill in where the a was with the x squared, I'm going to put a 2. Where the b is with the x, I put a negative 12, and where the c is all by itself, the constant term, I'm going to put a plus 8. So we're going to figure this one out. We're going to pick values for x and figure out the y's and plot our ordered pairs. And what we're going to get, this quadratic relationship, is going to form a parabola. Like a linear relationship forms a line, a quadratic relationship is going to form a parabola. And we're going to see what this parabola actually looks like. So we're going to use our relationship, this y equals 2x squared, oh, that should say plus 8, not plus 13. So plus 8. Uh, we're going to fill this in and I'm going to pick these values for my x and figure out what my y is. So here's what I do. I'm going to go 2 and instead of x I'm going to write 0 squared minus 12 times 0 plus 8. Now it's always nice to get zeros because these things are basically just going to go away and all I'm left with is an 8. So this gives me the point 0, 8. And I'm going to graph that on my grid. I'm going to go to x equals 0 and then go up to y value of 8. So there's my first point right there. Now I'm going to sub in the 1. So 2 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1 plus 8. Now we have to follow our order of operations. 1 squared is simply 1 times 2 gives me 2, and 12 times 1 gives me subtract 12, and then plus 8. And now just follow um, your order of operations. We just go left to right here. So 12 or 2 minus 12 is negative 10, plus 8 is negative 2. And that gives me a second point on here. We picked the y value or the x value of 1, and we figured out that the matching y value was negative 2. So I go to 1 and then down to 2 right there. Now, how about if I put a 2 in there? 2 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 8. Notice that 8's not changing in any of these things because it didn't have a variable with it. So it doesn't matter what x is, it's always going to be 8 on the end. Uh, now let's figure this out. 2 squared, got to do the squared part first. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 12 times 2 is 24. And then plus 8 equals, well, 8 minus 24 is negative 16 plus 8 is going to bring us back up to negative 8. And so that's going to give me, we picked the value of 2 and we figured out that the matching y value was negative 8. So when I go to 2, I have to go down to negative 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Now we could keep doing that. We could keep plugging in the numbers there. I'm not going to do it for any more of them. Uh, you can try it if you want, but I'm just going to give you the answers. So when I plug 3 in, I get negative 10. So that gives me a new point of 3, negative 10. And if I plot that on my grid, I go to 3 on the x 
and negative 10 on the y down here. And when I plug 4 in, I get negative 8. So I've got the point uh, 4 and negative 8. And you can see they're not lines that we're, we're having here. This is 4, negative 8. It's starting to come back up on itself. And when I plug 5 into this equation, I get negative 2. So it's coming even back up on itself further. I have to plot the point 5, comma, negative 2. So I go to 5 on the x-axis, and then I have to go down 2 to get my y-coordinate. And lastly, 6, maybe you can guess it, it looks like it's coming right back up to itself. 6 looks like it's going to be up here, and that is in fact what it is. If I plug 6 in, I get positive 8, so that 6, comma, 8 is another point. So here's what our parabola looks like, uh, and we can try and draw a nice smooth curve through. This is a little bit hard on my, my little tablet here, but I'm going to draw a nice smooth curve through those points, and there is my parabola. Okay, uh, so that's what a parabola looks like. It's a nice smooth curve. If you can draw a smooth curve, which I can't on here, but it's supposed to look like a smooth curve. A nice smooth curve uh, that hit, hits those points and it comes down to a low point and then goes back on itself. So, now why can't the a value in this be zero? Well, let's assume that a actually is zero. Let's say that a is zero and b is, let's just pick a b, how about negative 2, and c is, let's make it 11. Okay, let's plug those values in for a, b, and c. So we would get y equals uh, 0x squared uh, minus 2x, when I plug in a negative 2 for b, and plus 11 for c. So this 0x squared means we don't even actually have any x squareds, and y equals negative 2x plus 11. Well, hopefully you recognize this as being a line. This is a line that has a y-intercept of 11. Remember, y equals mx plus b, mx plus b. So this b part here would be our y-intercept, and our slope would be negative 2 for slope. Um, so this is actually a line, not a parabola. This is a linear equation. Okay, So the answer to this is if a equals 0, the x squared term is gone. And it's just a line. So it's the x squared term that actually makes this thing a parabola. And so we need that x squared term. So if a is 0, the x squared term is gone. Okay, now we're going to look at using a graphing calculator to find an equation here. And the first thing I have to do is actually get some points on here. So I'm going to take a look. This is from your textbook. Uh, we're going to try and find the equation of this person's mouth here. Uh, and we need some points. So I'm going to uh, find some points on this grid, uh, starting with this one here. Looks like 5, 5 is on there. Uh, here's another one. Um, we don't need too many of them. Here's an another one in here that looks like, uh, I don't know what it looks like. We'll just take a few. Let's put a few dots on these this person's teeth and see if we can figure out what the points represent. And they've got a whole bunch of them down here. They went every five spaces. So um, let's fill in what we know. So five looks like it's up five. So five width um, and zero. Uh, zero is down here by five too. So I'm going to say that that's zero, five. Oops, that's really thick. zero, five, and then at five, it's still at five, and at ten, let's go up, where do we hit at ten? Ten is right around here, so at ten, I'm going to say we're kind of at twenty-five, 
and then at 15 let's go up 15 where do we hit it here at 15 I think we're kind of at 35 at 15 so we're gonna put 35 in there at 20 we're gonna go up see where we hit it at 20 I'm gonna say we're at about 40 at 25 we'll go up till we get it at 25 I think we're at about 45 and I'm gonna finish filling this in um, you get the idea so I'm gonna save some time and finish filling it in okay so there I finished filling them in and now we're gonna plot them on the graphing calculator and I want you to follow along with this as we go along so we're gonna use the graphing calculator uh, once you get the ca graphing calculator you should clear the memory the memory on mine's already cleared but here's how you do yours you press the second button here and then you press plus and it comes up memory and then you're gonna press seven one two and then it's gonna say RAM all cleared and then you can just press clear and it comes up like this so now we're going to enter all of these numbers um, this width is my X list and this depth is my Y list because we've got along the X axis and along the Y axis so here's where we're gonna enter it into the calculator you're gonna press stat and then you're gonna press enter to go into the edit commands and now it just looks like this um, this little table of values so we're gonna put all of the widths you always put your X's into list one and put your Y's into list two so I'm gonna go ahead and enter all of these into the list one and then I'm gonna enter all of these into list two so here's how we do it I'm gonna put zero enter five enter ten enter and I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and enter them all in you maybe want to pause the video and enter them all in as well there now I've entered all of my X's in list one and all of my Y's in list two now I have to tell the graphing calculator that I want it to graph them and so here's how I do that I press second Y equals and it takes me into the stat plot right now it says all the plots are off to turn them on you press enter to go into plot one and then you press enter again and see how it's now on on and it already has it also already says our X list is list one and our Y list is list two so when we press graph we should get it however we've only got a couple of points and here's the reason why uh, this graph only goes from negative 10 to positive 10 on the X axis and negative 10 to positive 10 on the Y axis well we went from zero to 60 on the x-axis and we went from 0 to basically 50 on the y-axis so we have to tell the graphing calculator that we want it to do the same thing and here's how we do that we press window and we tell it we want it to go from 0 we want our x's here was our smallest x and here's our biggest x so we want it to go 0 to 55 and then we go down to our Y's and our smallest Y value was 5 but I'm gonna leave it at 0 I'm gonna say 0 was our smallest Y value and the smallest X value or the largest Y value uh, was way up here at about 45 but I'm gonna say 50 just so that I make sure it's all in there okay. now when I press graph I should have more of what I was looking at now it looks roughly like a parabola um, this graph was really hard to get points on it and so we just tried the best that we could so it doesn't look exactly perfect uh, but we want to get the calculator to give us an equation for that so here's how to get the calculator to give us an equation we press uh, stat and then we go over to calculate and we're doing quadratic relations it looks kinda like a parabola so we're gonna choose quad reg which is number five and then we just press enter now it's gonna go ahead and give us an equation now that equation looks pretty messy so here's the equation that it gave us uh, what this actually means is instead of a we're gonna fill in this number instead of B we're gonna fill in this number instead of C we're gonna fill in that number but we're not gonna fill them all in at the same time uh, or we're not gonna fill all of them in we're not gonna put all of those decimals in two decimal places is good enough so what this means is the equation the calculator gave me is y equals 
um, our a value is negative 0 0.05 and then I need that x squared that has to be in there uh, plus our b value is 3.26 if I round it and I need an x to go with the b value and the c value is minus 2.5 Five, three. So there's the best fit parabola to go on here as given to us by the graphing calculator. The graphing calculator will always give you those things. Now I'm going to show you how to take the graphing calculator and have it put this, uh, this parabola on this grid and see how it, how it fits those points. So here's how we do it. You're going to press y equals and then you're going to press VARS. We want statistics, so we go down to 5. Then we have to go over to where it says EQ at the top, and we want the regression equation, which is number 1. Now it just pops all of those numbers in there. We could have just typed this in here, but the calculator pops them all in. And now when we press graph, it's going to draw a parabola through those points. Now notice it didn't hit them all. This is the best fit parabola for those points. It didn't quite hit them all, but that's the best fit parabola. And we've got this um, little equation, or that, sorry, not the equation, this little graph to go with it. So that's how we find the best fit parabola. So now I want to summarize um, just what we've learned. In summary, um, here's what a parabola looks like. If you have a parabola, it basically looks like that. Or it might look like that. Okay? Um, it's, it might be skinnier, it might be fatter, but basically it's generally that shape. Their equation must have an x squared term in it. Oops, that's not a squared. The equation must have an x squared term in it. Uh, like this, y equals x squared plus 3. Or, like this, y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. Or it could even look like this, y equals x plus 3 all squared minus 6. And the reason, this doesn't look like it has an x squared in it, but if I expand this out, remember the unit we did before? This means x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if I expand out x plus 3 times x plus 3, then I do get x times x gives me x squared. x times 3 and x times 3 are going to give me two 3x's, which together give me 6x. And 3 times 3 gives me plus 9 and then we have this minus 6 on the end. So when I expand it out, there is an x squared. So it might look like this, the x squared might be hidden. Um, that's it for this video. Um, good luck with the graphing calculators.